Hello students, today we will be discussing about sequences and series. Now, you are all familiar with ordered pair. It has two elements, maybe numbers, integers, fractions, anything. Here, this pair is not equal to this pair. It means in an ordered pair, the position of the element is important. It makes sense. Similarly, this is an ordered triple. We can have ordered quadruple. In this manner, we can have n terms like this, which you call ordered n tuple. This thing can also be called a sequence of n elements, a1, a2, and so on up to a n. Of course, this is the case of a finite sequence, but normally in mathematics, we will most often come across sequences having infinite number of examples, elements. Then we write them as e a1, a2, and so on, just leave it. So, this means it contains infinite number of elements, and each element has a specific position. Now, we must distinguish between a set and a sequence. The set of natural numbers and the sequence 1, 2, 3, and so on, they are not exactly the same because in a set, the elements will not repeat. Whereas, we can have a sequence like this in which all the elements are the same. Also, we can have an element like this where the first two terms repeat. So, in a sequence, the elements need not be distinct, whereas in a set, the element must be distinct and then elements may not have an order, whereas in a sequence, the elements have a specific order. In what follows, we are more inclined in sequences of special types. Sometimes, we do not write the list of all the elements we give a rule to find the various elements. For instance, if you have a sequence like 1, 3, 5, can you guess the next number? Yes, obviously next number is 7, then it is 9, because we have a special pattern here. We find that every number occurring in the sequence is just two more than the previous. Similar case is this 1, 5, 9, 14 and so on. In the given sequence, we have T1 that is first term is just A. T2 that is second term is A plus D. T3 is A plus 2D. Similarly, T4 is equal to A plus 3D and so on. Now, you can observe that number of Ds here has some link with the number of terms here. For instance, in second term, there is just 1D. In third term, there are 2Ds. In fourth term, there are 3Ds. So, we can expect that in 17th term, there will be 16 d because 16 is just 1 less than 17. In this way, in general, T n is equal to a plus n minus 1 d. Now, this is our expectation. This may not be always true. That is why it is better 
to prove it by mathematical induction. So, we are going to prove that T n is equal to a plus n minus 1 d for an a p. So, our p n is just the statement this clearly p 1 is simply t 1 is equal to a plus 0 times d which is quite correct. So, p 1 is true. Now, we assume this result for k. So, let p k be true. This means t k is equal to a plus k minus 1 d. Now, to obtain the next term, we have t k plus 1 is just d more than the k term, which equals a plus k minus 1 d plus d, which equals a plus k d, which can be written as a plus k plus 1 minus d. So, we have t k plus 1. Thus, we find that t k plus 1 follows the same pattern. So, p k plus 1 is true. And hence, p n is true for all n belonging to n. That means, t n is always a plus n minus 1 d for all the value of n. So, thus we have established the formula for the nth term for any a p where a is the first term and d is the common difference. Having proved the result, we can use this any problem without any hesitation. Now, let us take some examples involving a net term. Suppose the question is find the 25th term of 1, 4, 7, 10 and so on. Here, a is equal to 1 and d equal to 3. Hence, T 25 is equal to A plus 25 minus 1 D that equals 1 plus 24 times 3 which equals 73. Thus, we can say with full confidence that the 25th term of 1, 4, 7 and 10 and so on is exactly 73. The formula which we proved is not only helpful for finding n -th term, sometimes we can also find the value of n when n -th term is given to us. For instance, if we are to find the question like this 1, 5, 9, 13 and so on. Suppose we are to find which term is 61, which term is 61. Here, a is 1, d is 4, n is not known to us, but t n is given to be 61. So, we have the formula t n is a plus n minus 1 d. Let us put the values of d, n, a, etcetera. What do you get? We get 61 equal to 1 plus n minus 1 times 4. This implies 61 is equal to 1 plus 4 n minus 4, which implies 61 plus 3 is equal to 4 times n. 
which makes n equal to 16. So, we have proved that the 16th term of the sequence 1, 5, 9 and so on is equal to 61. The same formula can be used for finding the first term or even finding the common difference. So, in any question out of four parameters, if three are known to us, we can always find the fourth. Let us take an example. The first term of a sequence is 5. The 15th term is 75. Find the entire sequence. Here, A is 5, D is not known to us n is known to us that is 15 and also t n is known to us as 75. We can solve this as t n is a plus n minus 1 d. So, t n is 75, a is 5, n is 15, d is unknown. This gives 75 minus 5 is 14 d that is 70 is equal to 14 d. So, finally, d is equal to 5. So, it is clear that whenever out of the four parameters a, n, d and t n any three is given we can find the fourth. Now, look at what I write 3 plus 6 plus 9 and so on. What I have written is not a sequence. In fact, it looks like a sequence, but there is a difference. Here a plus term is coming between any terms. So, a series is almost like a sequence, but the only difference is each term is connected by a mathematical sign mostly plus. As far as the nth term is considered, the formula is the same, but for a series we can do one more thing. We can also find the sum of n terms. To find sum of n terms, we can write S n as 3 plus 6 plus 9 and so on up to the nth term is clearly 3n. Once again, we write Sn as 3n, the previous term 3n minus 3 and so on up to 3. If we simply add this, we get 2Sn equal to 3n plus 3 again 3 n plus 3 and so on and lastly again 3 n plus 3. So, in this sum we get 3 n plus 3 is occurring exactly n times. So, it equals n times 3 n plus 3. Now, mind this sum is the value of 2 s n. So, we get S n is equal to n by 2 3 n plus 3. Now, what we did? We found the sum of n terms for a particular series. To have a general formula, we take the general case A plus A plus D and so on up to A plus n minus 1 D. Let us call it S n. S n can be written again the reverse order as A plus n minus 1 d plus A plus n minus 2 d and so on and finally A. 
if we add it on the left hand side we get 2sn while on the right side we have 2a plus n minus 1 d as the first term also the same thing as second term and so on and we get such terms in n number again you have 2a plus n minus 1 d. So, each term is the same, but number of such terms is exactly n. So, which equals n times 2 a plus n minus 1 d, which makes S n equal to n by 2 2 a n minus 1 d. Thus, we have a formula for the sum of n terms of any a p, where the first term, inner term and common difference are known to us. Today, I have introduced you the concept of sequence. We also discuss in specific what is known as arithmetic progression. In short, we call it a p. We have proved a formula for the general term namely T n is a plus n minus 1 d. We have also worked out a formula for the sum of first n terms namely S n is equal to n by 2 times 2 a plus n minus 1 d. With the help of these two formulae we can solve almost any problem of a p. Thank you very much.